Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of THR Australia, I'm delighted to welcome you to our inaugural webinar in our digital conversation series with the Prime Minister of the Hellenic Republic, Kyriakos Mitsotakis, and Andrew Liveris, THI's global chairman and co-founder. Two outstanding and dynamic people who I'm sure need no further introduction. In what is an extremely busy schedule, we're delighted and honoured that the Prime Minister has agreed to participate in this inaugural webinar, noting, of course, this is his first live stream event to a predominantly Greek Australian audience. Andrew, we're here tonight because of the vision you shared with us back in 2012 when you co-founded the Hellenic Initiative. Thank you for all you've done to foster a sense of togetherness among the Greek diaspora. May I also acknowledge His Excellency Arthur Spiro, Australia's Ambassador to Greece, who joins us from Athens, and His Excellency Yorios Papakostas, Greece's Ambassador to Australia, who is joining us from Canberra. Today's conversation will cover a number of key issues, the emergence of a stronger Greece, Greece's current challenges, and above all, how we, the Hellenic diaspora, can best contribute to the process of renewal within Greece. It now gives me great pleasure to hand over to Andrew to commence his conversation with the Prime Minister. Thank you, Nick, and thank you, Mr. Prime Minister. Wonderful to see your smiling face and really incredible that you've created some time for us. I know you have limited time, so I'm going to jump right in and let you know that you've got the Australian diaspora right here alongside you. This THI is very proud of the over 600 who've registered for this event. We'll have much, much more watching. Next year, 2021, a big year for Greece, a big year for all of us who know what 200 years of the modern Republic mean. Tell us, can it become something that helps be a catalyst to reunite the diaspora? Give us your thoughts on that, if you don't mind, Mr. Prime Minister. It's a real pleasure uh, to see you, and uh, it's a privilege to be able to uh, participate uh, in this uh, inaugural um, um, webinar. And my best uh, greetings to all of those who are watching uh, in Australia. I have been trying to, to come to Australia, uh, but unfortunately, due to COVID, we had to reschedule our overall um, uh, trips. But I do hope that uh, either in 2021 or in 2022, I will be able to come uh, and meet this uh, phenomenally dynamic uh, diaspora. Uh, and I'm really so excited about, you know, the prospects of working together, uh, not just uh, in terms of talking about what we can do, but actually doing things uh, that will be to the benefit of our country, but also the benefit of the diaspora. Just uh, to answer your, your question, 2021, is obviously going to be a very, very important year for Greece. We are celebrating our bicentennial. Uh, and we've uh, decided to do it in a slightly different way. This is an opportunity not just uh, uh, to celebrate the emergence uh, of, uh, of modern uh, Greece uh, and to uh, take a, a look at this trip, uh, this you know, uh, province of the Ottoman Empire that has become uh, the strongest, most dynamic, uh, uh, economy uh, in, uh, in the Balkans, but also to, to look and learn from our history. Uh, usually we are very good at celebrating our triumphs. We're not that good at assessing what, what went wrong throughout this, uh, this journey. So I would, I would encourage everyone to, to take a critical look at what happened, what we, what we did well, and to examine this constant cycle um, of triumphs and, and catastrophes, which, however, uh, if you put them in context, have resulted in what, what we see today. So overall, this has been a great success story, uh, and it, it should be celebrated as such. But at the same time, for me as Prime Minister of the Hellenic Republic, but also for many of us who work on this project, this is also an opportunity to reintroduce Greece to the world uh, as a modern, vibrant, dynamic country that is embracing the challenges of the future and doesn't just rely on the laurels of the past. Uh, and uh, this will be an opportunity, essentially, to rebrand the country. Uh, and uh, we are working very hard uh, also with uh, the team that uh, is headed by Yana Angelopoulou uh, to have a different type of celebration that will be measured, uh, not too triumphant, but confident and in line with um, what Greece um, has to offer the world uh, post-2021. 
So I'm really excited about, uh, uh, about the upcoming year. Hopefully, we'll be, we'll be done with the pandemic at least uh, during the second half of the year because, as you can imagine, the pandemic has, has forced us to uh, realign our priorities. But overall, we've done reasonably well. And we also take confidence out of that. Yeah. And Mr. Prime Minister, I'm going to keep the diaspora in your mind front and center. So my second question uh, on the, you quite rightly said, the things we can learn from our history, the things that got us here, I believe you look in the past to learn where you go in the future. Right now you're dealing with an existential crisis as it relates to the Eastern Mediterranean and as it relates to the islands. And of course, you're talking to a Castro region descendant here. So, you know, I know, I know you know how important these topics are and you're dealing with them at this very moment, geopolitical issues and how the diaspora can help. Give us some guidance. What, what can we do? What, how do we put our voice alongside your voice? Well, uh, uh, first of all, thank you for raising this, this question because it is the, you know, the one topic that seems to dominate the public discourse uh, in Greece. Let me again draw from a historical analogy. When did Greece do particularly well uh, in terms of its uh, successes in the international sphere? Obviously, when it had a strong military, which acted as a deterrent, that is a non-negotiable priority. But also when it managed uh, to forge a network of international alliances that aligned the interests of the country with the interests of what used to be in the past you know, the great powers. And essentially, this is exactly what we are what we're doing now. We are making the case that, unfortunately, we, we didn't want it to be that way, but there is one troublemaker in the Eastern Mediterranean, and that is Turkey. Uh, and when Turkey is called in trouble in Cyprus uh, or vis-à-vis -vis its relationship with Greece, it is not just threatening to member states of the European Union, but it is acting uh, as a destabilizing force uh, in the Eastern Mediterranean, which is an absolutely vital um, area for global geopolitical stability. So my task is to make sure that I don't um, talk um, uh, about the problem we have with Turkey strictly in a bilateral or a trilateral because I always keep Cyprus in my mind, but to make this essentially uh, a problem that is particularly relevant to the Europeans, to the Americans, to NATO. Why not also to countries as, as far away uh, as Australia? We are a believer in international law uh, and in the values of liberal democracy. And these are the values upon which Australia has also been, uh, been founded. So we're looking for allies everywhere we can find them that will support our basic argument that in international relations, you don't solve your problems through um, uh, gunboat diplomacy, uh, but through peaceful dialogue. And when we cannot agree, if, if we reach a point where we cannot agree, there are uh, international courts uh, that can solve uh, this issue for us. Uh, but at the same time, we will not be bullied. We will not be blackmailed. We will not be forced in a dialogue uh, uh, under the conditions which are not acceptable to us. We've said from the very beginning, we want to discuss Turkey openly honestly, about the one major difference uh, we have uh, with our neighboring country, which is the delimitation of our maritime uh, zones. Uh, and uh, Turkey has so far, although it had accepted in the, in the past the premise that it wants to discuss with us, um, you know, keeps uh, um, uh, forgetting what it has, uh, what it has agreed and, and resorting to the sort of uh, the brinkmanship, which primarily I think is done for for internal communication purposes, but certainly does not uh, um, contribute towards a conducive climate uh, of dialogue in, uh, in good faith. So I think it, it is important to make our case everywhere, uh, including in countries as far away as, as Australia, because again, uh, um, Australia is, is a country that shares the same values uh, with us. And uh, I think we've been uh, rather successful uh, in, in making the case that Turkey has been acting aggressively and as a destabilizing force. I don't want, and you know, I don't want you know, the global community to see this just as a difference between you know, Greece and, and Turkey, you know, two countries with sort of uh, historical differences that uh, are going again through a phase of crisis. No, it's something different. Turkey has changed profoundly uh, over the past years. Uh, one can no longer rely upon it as a stable um, you know, a NATO ally when uh, um, uh, it is, for example, purchasing advanced weapon systems from Russia and activating them. So this is an area of serious concern 
with the greatest uh, of, of, of the most important NATO partner, which is the United States. So it's not just us um, who are having a problem with, uh, with Turkey. It's practically almost everyone in the region. Yeah, you, we, your stand has been very, very much admired and strong and actually directed at the diplomacy channel, knowing that you've got an unstable neighbour. Uh, we have uh, taken an initiative. We've written to the Australian Prime Minister. He's, uh, as a member of the G20, he's definitely uh, having conversations elsewhere. We've also written to every EU head of state. Um, we, we will add to your voice uh, and let just let us know how much more we can do. Uh, the Greek diaspora cares a lot about the modern Hellenic Republic standing tall in the EU. But after all, it was only 10 years ago where Grexit was being talked about. So look how far we've come. And under your leadership, it's getting stronger. So let me go to the ties, cultural, faith, heritage. Many of us have property in, in Greece. What, can you, what would you want from us in terms of the new incentives and the new initiatives that you're announcing to help grow Greece? Uh, what can the diaspora do to be more present in the investment strategies you have and your growth strategies? Well, first of all, Andrew, let me point out that we managed to resolve uh, a, uh, an outstanding problem which was uh, always mentioned to me by the diaspora anytime I traveled. And that is now um, uh, everyone uh, you know, would set certain, you know, certain criteria, but especially the younger generation, those who left Greece during the, the past decade, have the right to vote um, uh, from their permanent place of residence. They don't have to come back to Greece. Obviously, this doesn't apply to everyone um, uh, who lives in Australia, especially those who left uh, after the Second World War, but it does apply to a significant number of people who would like to participate in the political um, uh, process, uh, but uh, were not able, especially in the case of Australia, to come back to Greece. Uh, and so now they can vote. They will be able to vote from, uh, from Sydney, from uh, Melbourne, from Adelaide, from, from Canberra. And we're very much looking forward for those who have the, the right to vote. The platform has already um, uh, been, been approved by me. We still have, you know, three years until the next election to make sure everything works perfectly. But this is going to be the first election where you will actually have um, um, uh, ballot boxes uh, across the world, especially where we have uh, a, large, um, 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 a, a large diaspora. And due to the time difference, you will also be the first ones to vote. Um, and uh, I think this will send a, a great signal that we, we want to politically engage with the diaspora. And we've also, I've also made it mandatory in our, um, in our party list, in what we call the Psicodeltio Epicratias, which is a national list, to have representatives from the diaspora. So we will actually have elected members of the diaspora in the Hellenic parliament uh, uh, in, in the next electoral cycle, which I think is very, very um, uh, important to, to strengthen these ties. Now, we've made a very, I think, strong and convincing case that uh, Greece is an attractive investment destination for large investments, but also for small investments. You know, think about, as you said, how many uh, um, uh, Greek Australians have property, which they may consider um, to renovate. Um, even that is made much more easier uh, these days. For example, we, have, we will have very um, uh, attractive packages that allow um, um, owners to retrofit their buildings and make them more eco-friendly. This applies equally to property owned by Greeks, but also property owned by um, uh, uh, Greeks who uh, actually uh, live, uh, live abroad. So it is very important um, for us, but also for KHI, and I know you've done that very systematically, to support this new image of Greece as a country that is open for investment, but that also embraces the challenges of the future. Uh, investment in Greece is no longer just about uh, tourism, it's also about digital, it's also about the green transformation, it's also about skills. Uh, so we have a very a broad uh, uh, investment uh, uh, approach and a very broad investment uh, portfolio. And uh, not only that, we also have been able to mobilize significant European resources um, uh, to help us manage this transition. Uh, COVID is going to um, make 2020 a particularly difficult year for all of us. We know we're heading towards a very big recession. So we know we have to mobilize more public funds, domestic funds, but also European funds, uh, to help us uh, make sure that we recover as quickly as possible. And uh, 2021 is also going to be, it should be, the year of the great economic recovery. Hopefully, uh, things go on what is planned, 
Uh, we will have you know, uh, an efficient vaccine during the first three months of 2021. Uh, and this will allow us to at least you know, make sure we save the tourism season, um, uh, make sure we guarantee safe travel, uh, and make 2021 again the year of the great economic recovery. As you know, we managed to open up the country to, um, uh, for tourism, at least for European tourism. We did better than most other European countries, but we did it without compromising the safety of our visitors, but also the, the safety of the local uh, population. So we've been rather sophisticated in the way we address this pandemic. And this has given us more credibility internationally. Not many people expected Greece to be successful after 10 years of crisis, but we've been very successful in managing the first wave. And again, if you look at all the European maps now, we're still one of the best performing countries in Europe during the second wave. So we're, we're quite happy about that. We know it can change very quickly. So I always will be very, very vigilant. And if we need to take some additional measures, we will always, always do so. We need to preserve um, this uh, success story also uh, during the management of the second wave. It's, it's a rebranding. The handling of COVID has uh, created an awareness that Greece can be great managers and the, the Greek government can lead. And this is, uh, we're very proud when, when this story comes out, even as you say, with a second wave. Also announcements like the big Microsoft announcement you just scored recently, uh, the Thessaloniki Digital Conference, uh, THI itself is participating in sponsoring young Greeks in IT. Um, you're, you're the greatest story never told and, and now the story is starting to be told with performance, even though, as you say, you're not alone. Every government out there is printing money to get us through this period of time. So there is definitely a need for funds. But I think this story of recovery, tell us, where do you see Greece in a few years? I mean, what's the key economic underpinnings of the, the new Greece economy uh, from your government, uh, Mr. Prime Minister? Well, well. Greece needs to use this crisis uh, as an opportunity to drive through dramatic changes you know, in, in the fabric of our uh, economy. I think we've made, we've suffered a lot during the years uh, of, the, uh, of the memoranda during 10 years of crisis. We, we became a lot poorer. We did try to do some important reforms, but quite frequently they were sketchy and they were not part of a coherent plan to actually change the, the country. This is exactly what we're doing now. We've asked uh, Nobel uh, Laureate uh, Pisarinis uh, to come up with um, uh, a 10-year growth plan for Greece. Uh, and he submitted his preliminary proposal. He will submit his final proposal by the end of this uh, month. Uh, and this will serve um, for us as, a, as an overall framework uh, of how to make sure that we don't just alleviate short-term pain, which we have to do, but also drive through reforms that will make Greece modern, competitive, open, vibrant, um, dynamic, tolerant. Uh, these are all attributes that one can associate with the Greek uh, spirit. But uh, I want a country that is confident. Uh, I, I believe a lot in self-confidence. Uh, and I think we've, we've, we've earned the right to be more confident uh, over the past uh, year. And this is very, very important when we um, try to reposition these in a, in, a, in a global you know, map where you're competing against countries which are also not, 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 not staying still. Everyone is trying to do their best to make sure that they bring prosperity um, to, their own, um, you know, to their own country. And that is why it is so important um, uh, to, to focus on areas such as the green transformation and digital. You mentioned the Microsoft investment. It is tremendously important, not just because of the, the jobs it will create, the hundreds of millions that will be invested in the country, but because when a big tech company such as Microsoft chooses um, to make such a long-term investment in Greece, that means that it has faith in the long-term potential of the country. And it also sends a signal to the entire tech world, hey, something is happening in Greece, you know, take a closer look. And it is not just Microsoft. You know, there are also other tech companies that are setting up um, uh, centers of excellence in Greece that are uh, benefiting from the fact that Greece has access to phenomenal human talent. Uh, also in technology, we have public universities, in spite of their difficulties, they keep producing excellent engineers. Yes. And not only yes. that, and we also have a diaspora. Uh, uh, that is, uh, especially the, the younger generation, um, uh, young Greeks who abandoned Greece during the crisis because there were no jobs. 
um, who've been trained abroad, but they want to come back to Greece. And for the first time, I have indications that we are seeing what we call a reverse bravery. Um, and what we also see is lots of foreigners who decide to spend the next year in Greece. Mm. They feel safe. So they work out of Greece. Uh, it's phenomenal. Uh, uh, it's, uh, we, we never thought this would actually, this would actually uh, happen. But think of it. Uh, in a globally connected world where you can work from anywhere, and COVID has proven that you can work from anywhere, if you have good digital infrastructure, which we do, and we will further invest in it, why not uh, you know, work out of Greece? Why should you just consider Greece as a place where you spend your holidays? Why not live here? Why not retire in Greece? And why not work out of Greece? Um, so I think we have a very convincing case to, to make. Why not work out of, uh, out of Castellari? So where would you find you know, a, 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 nicer, uh, a nicer place? And again, we're focusing a lot on the connectivity. We'll be one of the first countries to launch our 5G network. Uh, so we're investing a lot in, in, in next generation digital uh, infrastructure, both fixed line and, uh, and cellular. So we feel that we have the uh, ingredients to reposition Greece uh, as uh, a digital hub and not just as a place where you can come and have a great uh, uh, summer experience. You, you've said um, something very, very key to the diaspora, which is, you know, you are aware that the Atlantic Initiative has brought the diaspora together like never before. Uh, the platform to connect the diaspora to Greece has just arrived really literally with your government. Uh, you're creating policies and laying out foundations such that the Irish with Ireland, the Israelis with, or the Jews with Israel, the Greek diaspora has been ready for a long, long time, but it hasn't really had the, the connectivity. COVID gives us a connectivity we never imagined. So here we are. But you're laying out a plan for a Greece that has multiple sectors where we can invest in. So have you considered uh, the diaspora ready, willing, and able, as witnessed by this conference, have you considered maybe rekindling something like the Ministry of Greece, Greeks Abroad? In other words, finding a way to give us a platform to help that money come back, but more important, help the, the wisdom that we've learned in other systems come back and help you build this new Greek economy. Is that something that you have thought about? I know you've got the voting thing, but that's something I know the diaspora is really wanting to try to do, help you more overtly, help yeah, Greece become the Greece of the 21st century. We are examining all options. And what I do want to uh, achieve is to learn from those countries that have been successful in mobilizing uh, the diaspora on a permanent basis. Yes, because you know, yes. you know, Andrew, that we've had discussions like yeah. the one we have today for decades, and we haven't been really successful no. uh, at addressing this problem. But uh, I think if this government has proven one thing is that it doesn't shy away from complicated tasks and that it delivers results where others were not that successful. Right. Uh, so for me, this is a priority, uh, and it doesn't necessarily have to. Uh, everything doesn't need to happen through the. Um, uh, sort of through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, we can work with organizations such as uh, uh, the, the Hellenic Initiative have been very, very open to sort of outsource um, uh, activities that would be run by the state to um, uh, organizations that share the same values and, uh, and principles uh, uh, with us. There's also the additional uh, issue that has to do with... Uh, uh, interaction with the Greek bureaucracy. You know, we've made huge digital leaps in Greece, which yes. eventually will make the life of those who live abroad even that simpler. I mean, the, um, uh, the, the sort of the, the, the pain and complication of having to deal with, um, you know, uh, uh, our, uh, uh, our Greek consulates is just not acceptable to me in a, in, in a digital world. And you know that we've already made changes in that direction. But one of the first things I've told uh, our Minister of Digital Transformation, Kerakak, just to make sure that um, uh, the services that we offer are also offered to Greeks who live abroad, especially regarding the sort of processes that they need to be, that they use the, uh, the most. So it's small bureaucratic steps, but which eventually bring uh, Greece closer um, um, to, to the diaspora. I mean, our new portal, gov.gr, has been a great success. And we're only going to uh, strengthen it. 
But uh, I'm very, very open to, to look at best practices and to look at how the state can work with uh, uh, organizations such as the Hellenic Initiative uh, to make sure that we foster these networks, formal but also uh, informal, that will bring the diaspora uh, closer to, to Greece. So I think there's a lot to, uh, to talk about uh, that topic, and I'm always open to entertain uh, and to discuss uh, concrete uh, suggestions or proposals that you may have. But one thing I can tell you is that not everything needs to be run through, you know, uh, the, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Great. And there are great examples around the world of how you can combine the international uh, arms of the diaspora to, uh, of course, your government. And I know you and I have talked about a lot of those. We're getting close to the time with, uh, that uh, your team told us you, of course, have a couple of things going on. And so I'm going to hand it over to Nick Pappas here in a minute, our chairman here of our THI Australia. Um, but I want to reaffirm the support you have, whether it's the current crisis, the support to diversify your economy and what you might need from us and any sort of formal or informal way you want the diaspora to stand tall and be proud of Greece under yeah. your leadership, um, ask it of us. And of course, come visit when you can. This country is amazing. I've been here for eight months, haven't been able to leave, but trust me, it's very hospitable and there's a lot of great Greeks here. So, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Prime Minister. And I've also been, uh, I want to raise a question before I leave you, but I've also been, uh, you know, fascinated by this cooperation within the Benaki Museum um, uh, and uh, the Hellenic Museum of Melbourne, uh, yes. which uh, I, I think is uh, sort of an emblematic uh, example of how we can bring more of the, you know, the cultural heritage from Greece uh, to, uh, to Australia. Yeah, I, there's a lot we could say that Bill Papastetti might want to say something indirectly. But Nick Pappas, why don't you handle that particular question because you're very familiar with it and I'll get you to help close the, the event. Mr. Prime Minister, thank you. And I'll let Nick uh, take over now and maybe answer that question or that statement, which I totally agree with. Nick. Uh, Prime Minister, it is a deeply held belief here that we can recreate in Australia the standards, the museum standards, the museological standards that Greece has and display some of Greece's finest artefacts in a new setting uh, that is respectful of them, but also engages the broader mainstream community. So uh, we're hopeful that such a dream can come true. Uh, the Benaki has been very, very uh, accepting of the idea and in fact, enthusiastic, and we're very thankful to them. Prime Minister, we don't want to keep you. We've been asked to keep this to 30 minutes, but you've afforded us a very special privilege today to be able to enter your office and to hear you cover so many important issues for the Hellenic diaspora in your conversation with Andrew. You can rest assured, Prime Minister, that as you navigate these important issues, the Greek diaspora of Australia stands behind you and with you. Uh, to the members of the public that have joined this uh, call, uh, if you want to learn more about THI Australia and its programs, supporting both vulnerable communities and entrepreneurial efforts in Greece, please contact us. We'll shortly be launching an online winter appeal for our partner charities in Greece, and we invite you to consider supporting this worthy initiative. Once again, thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you all for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. And again, congratulations for everything uh, you do, also on the charity front, which is very important and will continue to be very important. Uh, I think I've made it no secret that my, my number one priority, it's good to talk about you know, medium, long-term plans, but short term, we need to protect the, the more vulnerable. Uh, and of course, there has been uh, so much um, pain caused um, uh, by COVID that you know, any contribution uh, by the, um, uh, the, the Greek Australian community that will be directed to projects that actually make a difference in Greece, and you have a lot of experience uh, in doing that, is from my perspective, uh, greatly appreciated. So again, thank you very much. And, and thank you for everything you do. And my best regards to our friends in Australia. Thank you, Prime Minister. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.